hey, here we are back at the bench. Got a few things out here, along with a couple of penguins. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. Move them over there. Get Penguin Island out of the way. Got this nice greaves. This thing shaves like a beast. I just tuned it up this morning on this stone. That's why this is out. Uh, I just wanted to do like a fast video. Well, fast for me. <laughs> and um, I got that I, I, an idea to do that when I was touching this blade up. So I uh, just had a great shave. This thing is just amazing to shave with. It's a full hollow. Normally, I want something um, a little heavier in grind than this. And I honestly would prefer this if it was a little heavier, but it's still a great blade, and I'm really digging it. Got G10 scales, got stainless collars. It was a sort of a restoration thing I did. Anyway, so I had that out. And I was working on this stone, and uh, see, it's still wet. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It just feels a little sloppy. Anyway, I was honing on this, and uh, I was thinking of a message I got uh, in Facebook. Someone... Uh, sent me a message, had really nice things to say, you know, about my videos and stuff. And he mentioned, uh, you know, whether or not I was going to have any interesting Nakayamas. Now, this happens to be a Nakayama, but I got to tell you, stop focusing on the name of the hole in the ground, the stones, J-Nats, whatever, you, you know, even codicules, okay? Get away from that naming thing, okay? It's nice to know where your stone came from, but to focus on getting a stone from a place... It has to take a back seat to getting a stone that meets your expectations, has your quality assets that you're looking for, your hardness, your feeling, your, your speed, your whatever, okay, all of those things. Those are the things that matter, not where it came from. This just happens to be a Nakayama, and yeah, it's a great stone. Notice the lack of sparkly kawa. <laughs> um, yes, it's still a Nakayama. And it's a very, very good stone. It's very hard. It has a very particular type of feel to it that I endear. Um, it's a little difficult to work with. Um, the slurry breaks down very slowly. It's a very sharp type of particulate. If you finish too early, you get a little bit of tooth on the edge that you don't want. And it forces you to really hone the snot out of your blade. And that creates other issues like you have to keep your slurry wet because the longer you hone on it, the more aeration, the thicker it gets, so on and so forth. So you really have to be on your game with the stone. It's a killer stone. If it was from Shobodani, if it was from Ozuko, if it was from any other hole in the ground or I didn't have any idea where it came from, it would not change the quality of the stone. So while I understand brand name recognition, you know, you know, Ralph Lauren, Polo, everyone, Polo, you know, for some people, I know people don't like Polo, whatever, you get my point. Uh, Budweiser beer, yes, some people don't like Budweiser beer, but most people know what it is. So there's a connection, that's what I'm talking about. So people feel connected to Nakayama because they hear about it. Why? Why do they hear about it? Because people go on forums and groups and they're like, oh, I honed on my Nakayama. Oh, I bet you that's a Nakayama. Oh, Nakayama makes the best. No, that's not true. It's not true. Nakayama was known for stones because they were one of the first two mines. They developed a reputation because they were producing stone that was better than another location at the time. It was producing softer stones or, or less consistent stones. So back then in those days, yeah, but, you know, Shobu and, and Nakayama, they were like the things. But the other quarries hadn't been exploited yet. And then over time, more holes were dug in the ground, more stones came out of the ground. And there are, I have Ozukos that hone as well as this. Might not be as pretty as this. <laughs> and they hone differently than this. And so I like the honing feeling of this sometimes more than I like hones from other locations. But don't focus on the name of the mine. Going out the door looking for a Nakayama is a self-defeating proposition. You're, you're going to be inclined to buy something that falls short instead of something that meets your expectations just based on the name. It's just, it's, it's a defeating principle. You know, and the same thing for lovely codicules. Um, this is, eh, I don't know what it is, to be honest. I, I don't get into, well, what hole in the ground did it come from? No, I, I don't go there. This is out because there was some fissuring in the uh, slate, which doesn't affect the honing. Yeah, I sell these in my store. This is 130 by 70 uh, millimeter stone. These are kind of like my favorite for a number of reasons. Size is great if you want to go handheld. It's easy. Bench top, it's big enough. You don't feel silly. The width is nice. 
But people all the time, what, what mine is that from? I read, you have to have a stone of a particular flavor. And it what the guy who told you that, what's his sample size? Sample size is everything. What is he basing his opinion on? What are the facts? What are the objective points that he brings to the table? Or is he just talking out his ass? Because I'm thinking he's talking out his ass. But I don't know, because I don't have the, that discussion in front of me. And I haven't had that discussion with anybody, because most people won't discuss that with me. <laughs> for some unknown reason, I don't know why people don't step to the table and be like, you got to have a La Petite Blanche, because I'm going to tell you you're full of shit. That's why that doesn't happen. So you got this nice, okay, so I got this wet. And at a first glance, it could be from any number of locations, because it's got this like sort of, I don't know very sort of ambery type of look to it but you know it doesn't matter i'm not getting whatever so i throw down some slurry be like how much slurry do you use not a lot tell you that don't need a lot of slurry people who like cover the stone and slurry you're opening up a world of pain for yourself look at this though look at that blush on this stone look at i, I just grabbed this out of the box I might put this in my special box. This is really nice. Reminds me of Josante. I know some of the veins and some of the traits associated with them. I wouldn't go on record in saying this is definitely Josante, but I've seen Josantes that do that. And I don't recall too many other veins that do that. What does it mean in the long run? Nada. I can tell you from that little uh, slurry action that the stone is a little soft, softer, and... Um, the slurry stone is a little harder, you know, in respect to each other. What does that mean? It means most of the slurry is going to come from this stone and not this stone because this is harder. Some will come from here, so there's going to be a blend, all right? Yes, this is the uh, letter opener from hell from uh, China, also known as a gold dollar. People love them. I don't. I use them sometimes. They're great test subjects. I have like 10 blades on my bench right now. They're all in a state of test. I, I can't really touch any of them because they're all going through like a process that I have records on. And if I pull one of them over here to hone on this, I'm just going to blow that test and I have too much time invested in it. I have a lot of new stones all the time and this is kind of where I'm at. So, you know, this nice honing feeling, which is very nice. It's waxy. Um, I can tell you that I think the speed, I got some medium pressure going on here. All right. So anyway, back to the guy with the, uh, the thing with the Nakayama, you know, besides, you know, maybe he should entertain the idea of, you know, looking for a stone that suits a uh, particular criteria. He mentioned uh, the scheduling i have with my uh videos and he alluded to a couple of things um one thing no my honeymoon phase is not over okay tammy and i got married in october and we love each other and she comes first and that's that okay and that's going to be forever so i guess my honeymoon is forever all right so that's one thing i'm just joking around the other thing is well he did mention it but it's like no hard feelings i, I get it um the other thing is the regularity. I'm on the same schedule I've always been on. I do like one a month, maybe one every six weeks when I have a, like a heavy edit. Sometimes I don't have the time to edit stuff down. And every time I edit, I got a review. So if it's a 45 minute video, just figure that out. You know, you see my slurry is getting gray, but it's not really super dark. So the speed here on this stone is what I would call average on slurry. Now, people will tell you things like um, this stone is fast because this slurry is black. And I just said, you know, you look at this, it's gray, but not really black. You have to be really careful about how you determine the speed of a stone. Now, I'm telling you that this is about average because I can tell by feel. I can tell how it's hitting the steel. And I'm looking at this and I'm factoring in the color. The color itself doesn't really mean too much because this could be pitch black or it could be almost white, depending on how frothy it is and a couple of other things. It's going to determine how the swarf from the blade suspends in your slurry. If it suspends heavily, it looks darker. If uh, the particles sink to the bottom, it looks lighter. All right. So that's something to know. When someone tells you, oh, the stone is fast on slurry, qualify it. Please qualify it. Uh, sample size is everything. You have to have a fair amount of experience with a lot of different stones 
to be able to start making determinations like that accurately. All right. It's very difficult to look at a blade and tell how much steel you took off. After like a gazillion blades, you can start to feel how the blade feels, the difference, and you can tell what's going on. And this is after like going back and forth between the bench and the microscope a million times. So there's that. So anyway, back to me making videos. Yeah, like one once a month. You know, I have a lot to do. I don't have a nine to five job. I do the Etsy thing. You know, orders to pack, stones to order, stuff to find. You know, I have other interests. Like I said, I'm married. You know, Tammy and I are going to go out to eat later. We're going to go shop and we're going to go do stuff. And we go upstate and this and that. I, I, I can't really do more than a video a month. But anyway, so um, the feel on this is waxy. It's not very gritty at all. In fact, so it's very slippery. Okay, but it's a little waxy. So um, there's that. Have to go by feel. Honing is by feel. You know, people looking for lap counts, forget about it. People looking for magic bullets, forget about it. People looking for like some sort of oddball indicator, like a little pop-up thing, like on one of those turkeys. No, doesn't happen. You just got to learn to feel. Overshoot the mark, undershoot the mark, blah, 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 go around and around and around and around. Okay, so basically now I can tell you I have pretty much eliminated the edge that was there which after the recent bout of testing was pretty dysfunctional. It's a little ratty. All right, so I'm going to clean that off. And don't do this. Rinse it off. I'm at my bench, and I don't feel like going and getting a ton of water in there. So I got this. So I had to finish. People talk about finishing on uh, cuticles, and uh, some people have recently uh, been saying, you know, I don't know, dastardly things like cuticles aren't uh, finishers. Because, you know, them and their four stones and the 15 blades that they've owned, they can make that determination. <laughs> that was sarcasm. So, um, see, this is why I don't do forums. Because is there's so much of this misinformation going on. I mean, I, I do go to a forum and, and all, and I don't notice that type of chatter there, but I don't go looking for it either. So to the guys saying that most codicles are not finishers, you're full of shit. It's simply, that's it, all right? You may not be able to finish on one, and that speaks to your skill set, but not the stone's capabilities. And that's something everybody needs to remember because this is not an automatic scenario. Just putting a blade on a stone doesn't mean you're going to get an edge you want to shave with. You got to work at it. You got to learn. You got to fail. You got to trip. You got to fall on your face. You got to get dull edges. And you got to go through the entire process like everybody else does. And eventually the light comes on and you figure it out. One of the things with finishing on a codicle, all right, has to do with pressure. All these stones, they have different personalities. Mother Nature has an incredible sense of humor. This particular one, I know this feel. So I know I can get away with feather light touch. Now, there, there used to be this obnoxious douchebag who used to complain when people would say, less than weight of the blade because he couldn't figure out how you make that happen. Apparently cognitive reasoning escapes that guy because if I just allow gravity, okay, that's weight of the blade. If I hold back from that, I'm basically pulling up a little bit. That's less than the weight of the blade. This is not a difficult concept to understand, but he was just an argumentative douchebag who had to constantly shoot down everything, everybody who knew more than him had to say. So I got this really light touch going on. But when I started off, the pressure was there. Apart from Codicule, uh, that uh, website, codicule.be, whatever it's called. Um, he once said that many codicles will finish better with some pressure. And I believe at least at the onset, you need a little bit there. And then the codico will tell you where to go. So this is going to be a while because on water, the stone is apparently extremely slow. I'm not auto slurrying, so I don't need to go to the sink and do the thing on the running water. Auto slurrying is when the stone kicks up some particles while you're honing and they can bang into your blade and dent your edge and dull it. A little auto slurrying isn't a problem. When you have enough of it, it's a problem.
Well, it can be a problem. I shouldn't have said that it is. A blanket statements with these things are no good, but it can be a problem. So it's something you want to look into. Honestly, a lot of times I finish on a little bit of slurry, and I'm not dull on my edge. I'm refining it. But when you get down to this water-only stage and you're really intending to hone on water-only, you really want water-only. Now, as you hone, can you hear that? Let me go up here. All right, that wispiness, the pitch will change. The finer, the finer your blade gets, your edge gets, the apex. The finer the apex of your edge gets, the more wispy you're going to pick up. So besides being able to feel the smoothness and hands here in my right hand, Besides that, you want the audible, okay? When I have this much water on the stone, which is minimal, you're not going to get like what you call a heavy undercut, but you will get some, and you can see it picking up on the edge in some places, but there's really almost no moisture there, and because I'm floating on top, again, the undercut is going to be diminished. So at this point, in this honing, using this style, my undercut becomes less of a tell than the audible and the sensation in my hand. So there's that. Now, sometimes people ask me why I don't I hone on the whole stone. Well, it depends on what I'm doing, but when I'm finishing, I want maximum control of my pressure. So I'm gonna work right here in the middle. This is pretty much good to go. I could probably stay on the stone though for like another day because honing on it is really cool. This one, this stone's going into my Etsy store at a reduced price because of the cracking and the, uh, you can't even see it. I, I patched it all up with epoxy, but it's there. So uh, it's going to go in soon, but not till I'm done playing with it. <laughs> so there's that. So, you know, that's a little bit of honing for you. It's a honing vlog. I, maybe I forgot to mention that, but I just want to talk about some stuff. Some other things that uh, have been going on. I tried some new shaft and glass stones over the last bunches of months, and I got the um, the 4,000, and I got the 10,000, okay? I got these for uh, cutlery. I use these two with razors, though, to give me a real feel for them. I got to tell you, the, the 4,000, this is the, um, that's the 10,000, excuse me. This is the... Uh, the HC version, I think they call it, uh, whatever it is, H something. It's gray, right? And um, people say it's a little softer. I, I did this with the 8K. I had both, but I didn't buy both of the 4K. Just bought this one. And this is a really nice stone. It has a little bit of give to it. For cutlery, it's great. For razors, it works fine too. Um, it's a 4 and a 10. They're kind of expensive, and they're still glass stones. In other words, there's still glass on it, and you only get 5 millimeters of stone. So that's like a screw job. But they're smaller and lighter. So if you're traveling or moving around, or you have limited space, that's nice too. Is this better than a 5 and a 12? No. The 5 and the 12 and the Pro Stone are still um, more solid choices for me for razors. If I was going to buy a set of stones specifically for cutlery, and I didn't have any, I would not consider these as a first choice. I, I got these kind of, like I have a, a bunch of them now, the, pro, the glass stones, just because I wanted to use them. Uh, I can see myself selling them in the future, but for now I'm using them and I'm doing a bunch of knife sharpening lately. So it's nice to have like another set of stones. Um, they're not cheap though. That, that 10K was some coin. The 4K wasn't too bad. Uh, the 500 is interesting. The 320 is great, but it's thin. The 500 double thick is awesome, but it's, 500 so it's kind of coarse but the fact that it's double thick is nice and i think all these should be double thick other stuff that's going on um if you follow my instagram you may have seen this uh i did this for my wife um uh, this is a, a japanese knife from the 80s these were imported by kmart the brand is sharp they were made in a very famous area of japan known for producing good steel these blades are pretty good you can get them i got this one for like i don't know 20 bucks shipped no sheath though. So I made a sheath. So I spent time, a lot of time. This is my first sheath making this, you know, I put like a last in this and 
rivets. I had to get the rivets and sizing and the whole thing, but a lot of time in that. So when people, you know, send me messages about not putting out more videos, I'm like, yeah, I could do more videos and not do anything like this. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep doing the stuff I do, but I'm going to keep up with my schedule. All right. This is a handle I just did. Um, it's an old uh, battle knife, USN Mark II by Camillus. Um, I'm kind of proud of this because it was a lot of work and it took a lot of time and I had to conceive the project from start to finish. And uh, I got two slabs here. You see the uh, black line in the middle, all right? That's a solid piece of G10. The outsides is what they call G wood, which is a laminate of real wood with G10, but the layers are really thin. So when you sculpt, you get these really cool concentric patterns, like it's topographic. And I use giant pins. These are quarter inch brass, tapped, everything's uh, epoxied. Handle is epoxy all the way through. There's no gap. This originally had a leather handle, like you've seen, like a K-bar. And uh, when I took the leather off, the leather was destroyed. When I took it off, the tang was totally rusted. And um, I didn't want to do a leather handle. They're cool looking, but they're not that functional to me. This is way more durable, way better grip. You know, totally waterproof. I like it sealed. There's no moisture going to get into this down here into the tang. Oh, I did blind tang, so you, you, you don't see the end. It's tang ends just like an eighth of an inch past that rivet. So solid. Anyway, that's just stuff that I like to do. Anyway, here you go. We're going to sign off now. I'm going to put the penguins back on parade, get them out here. I like to end with the penguins because the penguins are fun, and this is all about having fun, all right? I'm not going to put a stone out. Just going to, like, put these guys here just like that. All right? Summertime, hot as hell. Deal with it. Do some barbecue and go to the beach with your family. Come home at night, turn on the AC, get a stone out, get a blade out, do some honing, get your zen on. Remember, this is all about fun, all right? So go have some fun. Take care. Talk to you soon.